Hello, I'm Brandon House, and welcome to the Worldview Weekend Hour. Tonight, my guest is Usama Dakdak and Sharam Hadian. Tonight, we start a, a multi-part series on, well, a guy by the name of James White. And I know many of our followers and viewers are not familiar with him. Uh, they don't, many of you do not follow James White. I understand that. And uh, I think tonight you'll understand why that might be a good thing if this is indeed the error that James White has fallen into. We endeavor tonight to be gracious and kind. Uh, we've already had a word of prayer before we began the program, and we've prayed for James, and we've prayed for those who will be watching as well as the Muslims that will be watching. Yes, indeed, we love the Muslims. Usama Dakdok was born and raised in Egypt. He speaks Arabic fluently. He has translated the Quran from Arabic into perfect English word for word with his team. It took him over four years to do that. You can order a copy of the Quran that he has translated word for word at thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. He was never a Muslim. His daddy planted Baptist churches all over Egypt, but he was indoctrinated, if you will, taught Islam in the Egyptian schools. So he knows it backwards and forwards. My next guest is Sharam Hadian. He was born in Iran. His father was a high-ranking military officer and they fled Iran six weeks before the fall of the Shah. Today, Sharam is no longer a Muslim. In fact, he is a Christian pastor and he is calling the church, as is Usama, to understand the Trojan horse of Islam. He's also calling, they both are calling on Christians to not be involved in interfaith dialogue, as I believe James White has done by his own words, to not build bridges to the Muslims, because that is, again, part of their cultural jihad. Preach the gospel, but do not give them a platform by which to deceive the American people, and most importantly, the church. So again, we're going to play a lot of clips, a lot of video clips in this first program, so we can make the case. Our second and third programs will slow things down a little bit and get into some deeper issues. Let me first begin by welcoming uh, Usama Dakdok. Usama, welcome to the program. Thanks, Brother Brennan. It's always good to be with you and all our wonderful audience. Thank you. And then let me also welcome Sharam Hadian. Sharam? Brennan, great to be with you on air again. And uh, thank you for covering this important, important topic. It's so important. Well, thank you, Sharam. And I'm going to have to, folks, go from my mic to Sharam. So that's what you're going to be seeing happening because uh, we don't have a third mic in the studio because I don't think we've ever interviewed three people at one time. And I was like, what? I forgot all about that. So we'll get that fixed. I uh, have to get a mixing board in here and add that to it. Uh, we are discussing this, as I've already explained one reason why, but how did it come about? It came about because I had been speaking and writing about a gentleman by the name of Yasser Qadi, an imam here in Memphis, literally a mosque just about three, four miles down the road, an Islamic center. Uh, for many years, I, I wrote about him in one of my books a few years ago. So I've been writing about Yasser Qadi and speaking about him for a long time. Uh, I then went last week to look for some videos of him online, and to my amazement, I found a couple videos of uh, James White, who is a, a self-described, I guess, apologist. Uh, he, I guess, is one that wants to defend the faith, which is a good thing. I'm not sure that's what's happening here. I think the faith is actually being compromised. I think the gospel is being compromised, and I think Islam is being given a platform because you're going to find that this imam that he's talking to, that he seems to think is a moderate, and is moving to the left is anything but a moderate. He is a radical, I believe, uh, imam, and he is, uh, by his own admission, uh, following jihad. Now, there are different types of jihad. There's jihad where people blow themselves up, and then there's a jihad, as the Muslim explanatory document from the Muslim Brotherhood calls for, which is sabotaging their miserable house from within and getting their own elected officials to help them do it. And so uh, this imam has even talked about jihad as we'll see. So I don't think James White has done his homework. I think James White, in my opinion, has been duped. Um, and we get a lot of criticisms from James White's followers, and we'll address some of those, like, <clears throat> do we love Muslims? Um, do you go to mosque all over the world and put your life at risk to debate the, the Muslims? Uh, are you just uh, opposing ISIS because you want to make money? Because as you're going to hear, James White does not believe ISIS is um, representing Islam in its totality. Sounds a lot like Barack Obama. We'll answer the question, uh, have we been involved in slander? No, we have not. 
That's what they want to say. When you cannot refute the facts, go after the messengers. Yet no one has given us one example where we have slandered anyone. We have used the word useful idiot. That's not name calling. That's a, a category. In the 1950s, I believe, uh, about then, is when the term useful idiot came, was uh, developed as journalists and intellectuals and academic and uh, columnists would do the bidding for the communists thinking they would get some uh, influence uh, or they were just ignorant and would write things about the communists giving them some advancement. And that term useful idiot came about. Uh, we're not using that term to call anyone a name. It's a category of someone who's been duped. Um, then we will deal with the issue of why James White's doing this and is it biblical per 2 John 9 through 11. Let's begin with our first clip and we'll have Sharam and Yusama comment. Here's our first clip. Dr. Cotty does not really, as I see it, see himself at least right now or hasn't in the past as an individual called to engage in interfaith dialogue. Um, I really put the full court press on him to write a book with me, and he came close, but he wasn't finished with his doctorate yet, decided he didn't have the time to do that. Um, but one of the things I had to overcome, even to get him to think about it, was he just doesn't see that. He sees his calling is to speak to the Ummah, to the, to the Muslim people themselves. So in that radio program that you saw on video, Dr. White talks about the desire to write a book with him and reached out to him, but Dr. Cotty did not see himself involved in interfaith dialogue. We go on later, as you'll see, to hear him talk about how he wants to dialogue. I would first ask you, Yusama, are Christians called to be involved in interfaith dialogue with Muslims? <laughs> how much dialogue can you have between darkness and light? We are called for debate to defend our faith and to expose the lies of others, but not to dialogue with others, period. Sharam, your response, please. Well, I completely agree with Usama here that we have nothing to do with the spirit of Antichrist. You know, this is the point we're making is that Islam, while we are called to share the gospel, to reach out, and as Usama said, defend the faith, and even if debate, to be able to have a righteous argument uh, regarding defending Christianity and sharing the gospel. But where in the Bible does it say that we are to show respect for other faiths, for other false beliefs, and uh, that we're to dialogue and find common ground? And that's ultimately what uh, James White and Yasser Qadi are claiming to do, is that while we have differences, they say, we have uh, things in common. And we're making the point, I'm making the point as a former Muslim, there is nothing in common between Islam and Christianity. All right, here's our next clip. Watch this. I have been looking forward to this evening for a very, very long time. It has been my desire to engage in a dialogue like this. And when the opportunity came that I'd be coming into this area, uh, I contacted Dr. Cotty and I, I put out the call. Uh, and the church here was, uh, was so kind to respond and to uh, join with us in providing a place for us to have our conversation this evening. I want you to understand uh, what our motivations are this evening in, in coming together. This is not a debate. Some of you have seen uh, debates that I have done around the world. Uh, this is not intended to be a debate. Uh, we are going to, of necessity, discuss differences that we have. Um, the thing that makes this wonderful and the reason that I sought out Dr. Cotty, aside from the fact that I have learned so much from him, uh, over the years, uh, that he's been a primary influence in my study of Islam. I am a student of Islam, and I've learned much from him. But the reason I specifically sought him out is because I sense in him such a kindred spirit on the other side of the chasm that divides us in regards to our theology and our beliefs. He is a consistent Muslim. He believes what he says. He wants to seek for consistency amongst his people and his own practice. And so when you have two believing people, one Christian, one Muslim, come together and say, we need to discuss not only what divides us, but also where do we have similarities? How can we live in the same community? And the most important thing is this. If we do what, we, if we do what I hope happens this evening, we're going to do something absolutely unique. It hardly ever happens. And that is two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides. 
there is a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. And as a Christian, I want to see doors opened. As a Christian, I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, but to have love for the Muslim people. I want the Muslim people to understand that we care and that we want to have dialogue and that we're not seeking this evening to sweep our differences under the rug and say they don't matter. Dr. Qadi cannot present an Islam that is just simply one view amongst many. I believe in divine revelation. He believes in divine revelation. So how do we get along? How do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation isn't happening. And I want it to start tonight. And I want it to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding. That as, if you're a Christian, I want you to hear what this man has to say. I want you to understand why he believes the things he does. What his life is like here in the United States as a Muslim. And I want you to hear especially when he talks about what Islam is and what it is not and who speaks for Islam and all these types of things. I want you to hear so that we can have better communication with one another. That's why we're here this evening. Uh, I hope that's why you've come here this evening. All right, that's troubling at many levels. If you have a Bible, go to 2 John 9 through 11. 2 John 9 through 11. Actually, start at verse 7. 2 John verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. That would be your Muslims. They don't believe that. This is a deceiver and antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, I mean the essential Christian doctrines, and does not have God, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now listen, verse 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, the essential Christian doctrines of Jesus Christ, the deity of Christ, and other things, do not receive him into your home, nor greet him. I mean, do not give him a greeting of spiritual solidarity. Don't say you're kindred spirits. Don't say you're seeking common ground. Quote, for he who greets him shares in his evil deed. Now, folks, here's part of the problem. Very troubling that James White says that he has a kindred spirit with a man that I believe has the spirit of Antichrist. So that's a red flag. Secondly, he says this imam who has admitted to there is a form of legitimate jihad, as you'll hear, uh, says, James White does, that this man has been a primary influence on him in regards to Islam. Very troubling. James likes to tweet and put on Facebook, have you read my books? Have you listened to my debates? Maybe he has some good books and and debates on Islam, but why would I want to read them or watch them now, now that I found out he obviously can't take what he's learned, I don't think, and put it into practice and see through what's happening here and who this guy is. He clearly hasn't done his research, I don't think, on who James Cotty, or uh, who, who, James Cotty. (laughs) He clearly has not done his research. Yes, sir, Cotty. Yes, sir. He clearly has not done his research, I don't think, on who uh, Yasser Cotty is. And so here is the issue. Who is Yasser Qadi? Well, we have lots and lots of documentation on Yasser Qadi from our own research, as well as former law enforcement officials here in the state of Tennessee who've been following him uh, and researching him for a long time. Some of them have even talked to him, and they have provided us with lots of research. Too much to get to in this program. But here's a short, quick article from frontpagemag.com. Muslims who, Muslim who, uh, quote, apologized, end quote, for cursing Jews featured at terror-linked banquet. The article by Joe Kaufman. On the night of, and this, by the way, is 2016 article, last year. On the night of Saturday, February 6th, Cotty will be featured, spe- a featured speaker at the annual banquet sponsored by the ICNA. That's the Islamic Circle of North America. Folks, you ought to just look up the Islamic Circle of North America. It's, it, he's going to be speaking at this banquet Uh, uh, by ICNA Relief at the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Coral Springs Hotel Golf Club and Convention Center. The event is titled Making America Great Again, a cynical hijacking of Donald Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. This is Cotty's second such appearance in Florida in the last three months. In November, he was a featured speaker at a Tampa banquet sponsored by the Council on American Islamic Relations. That's CARE, a group that has numerous associations with Hamas including financial dealings and a group that was named a terrorist organization by the government of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, The ICNA Relief is a function of the Islamic Circle of North America, the American affiliate of South Asian Islamist group Jamati Al-Islami. I'm sure I'm not getting these names correctly. J.I.'s militant wing 
uh, Hezbollah Mujahideen owned the Pakistani compound where Osama bin Laden was killed. ICNA has been linked to terrorist financing and has used the web to promote different terrorist groups, including Hamas, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, and the Taliban. Mm. ICNA conducts annual functions along with Muslim American Society, which, like CARE, is a uh, United Arab Emirates designated terrorist organization. In August 2006, ICNA Relief was the top donor and partner to Pakistani charity al Kananmat Foundation. Uh, at the same time, this organization, acronym AKF, took a delegation to Damascus, Syria, to hand deliver nearly $100,000 to Hamas global leader Kalamid Masalal at his residence. Masalal thanked the group and said Hamas would continue to wage, quote, jihad, end quote, that means war, on, quote, Zionist, end quote, actually on the, quote, Zionist yoke, end quote, meaning obviously, I think, Israel, ICNA Relief continues to work directly with AKF overseas. Joe Kaufman concludes, Yasser Qadi's speech against Jews didn't happen in a vacuum. He has previously defended high-profile terrorists such as Ali al-Tamini. Folks, you ought to look up who Ali al-Tamini is who received a life sentence for his role as the spiritual leader of a Virginia Jihad group planning attacks against U.S. troops and Afia Sidigwa, an al-Qaeda operative who was convicted of attempting to murder a U.S. Army chaplain in Afghanistan. In addition, Qadi has threatened the wrath of God upon world leaders. Now, does that sound like someone you can have common ground with? Does that sound like someone that you should be a kindred spirit with? Does that sound like someone who should be a primary influence on Islam to you? Is that someone that should mentor you in parts of Islam, as you'll hear James White admits, you've been my mentor in this area? Do you think James White has done his homework on Yasser Qadi? But instead of dealing with the facts, my friends, you know what James has done? Exactly what we predicted. We predicted before his radio show went on the air, it would be a lot of smoke. He'd throw a lot of sand in the air, but not address the facts. Hmm. Because you can't. You can't refute what national security experts former military security experts, former police detectives, former police officers, former FBI agents have given to us on Yasser Qadi and written publicly that are all over the internet for anyone to find. What is wrong with James White? But see, James White simply needs to come out and say, I was wrong. I've been duped. I didn't realize who this guy was. No, he's not going to the left. No, he's not a moderate. No, we cannot find common ground with someone like that. No, I shouldn't have said I'm a, in common spirit with him or have a kindred spirit with him. No, he shouldn't have been trying to influence me on Islam. I should have understood what I've done. I'm sorry. End of debate. Thank you, James. Why will he not do that? His supporters and him throw all kinds of sand in the air to confuse. Oh, you're slandering. Oh, you're attacking a man of God. Oh, he loves Muslims. You guys must not love Muslims. His audience, by the way, are some of the most... Uh, angry, mean people I have ever dealt with in my life with Twitter and Facebook. But some of them now are attacking them and me and saying, we don't love Muslims. Lie. Sharam's family, many of them are still Muslims. He loves them. His daddy was a Muslim. He prayed for him. He cried over his desire to see him come to know Christ. Some of them have said, <clears throat> well, when do you go to mosque and, 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 and debate these guys? Uh, what does that have to do with the topic at hand? You see, they changed the subject. Why? Because you cannot deny the facts we're laying out. I believe James White should repent for bringing this man into a Christian church here in my hometown in Memphis. I didn't seek to go out and go after this. I was doing what I've been doing for years, researching and speaking about Yasser Qadi. Only then did I stumble on speeches by Yasser Qadi online that included off to the side more videos to my amazement, James White sitting with Yasser Qadi. So I didn't go looking for this. I stumbled on it. Now you say, as his listeners want to do, have you reached out to James White? This is not a Matthew 18 issue. We have no obligation to reach out to him. He's publicly speaking, publicly saying things in my hometown, and I have the right to speak out about it. We have invited James White by Twitter and on air to come on the program. I will moderate, be fair, just start the program, go to breaks, come out of breaks, close the program out, give each man of time to debate Usama Dakdok, who speaks fluent Arabic and knows the Quran backwards and forwards. Instead, he tweeted, why don't you, Brandon, come on my show? Why would you want me to come on the show? These are the experts on Islam because they don't, he doesn't want to debate the expert on Islam clearly. As someone said, I, I'm not sure that uh, James White has ever turned down debating anyone. Well, I think he's now turned down debating Usama Dakdok. So congratulations. I guess you now hold the title of the only person James White will not debate. So my friends, 
We also need to play another clip because James White says this guy is a consistent Muslim. Is he really? You heard it in his own words. Is he? Because in one place, he's sitting here all acting demeanor and, and his demeanor is all passive and oh yeah, yeah, we'll build bridges and I'll get along. But then we see he's giving speeches and we see who he's speaking about and who he's bringing in. Because one of the people he brought in just in May 2017, May 2017, is a guy by the name of Siraj Wahash. Siraj Wahash. Watch this clip before we have these gentlemen tell you about Siraj Wahash, who Yasser Qadi brought to Memphis and told everyone to come here. Is this man a consistent Muslim? Is he really a moderate? Is he someone you should be a kindred spirit with? Watch this clip. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Pleasant View Islamic School is holding its annual fundraiser. Alhamdulillah, exciting things are happening. The school is expanding. Uh, we definitely need your support. Uh, this year's fundraising event will be hosted by none other than Imam Siraj Wahaj, uh, an all-time favorite of all of us. I will be there as well, alhamdulillah. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, hope to see each and every one of you there. Uh, May 13th, Saturday, 5 p.m. Uh, in uh, the, the uh, Woodland Hills uh, Center. So we'll see all of you there. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now this is on their own school uh, Facebook page, as you can see here. There's the, there's the graphic for it, all right? This is on the school Facebook page that has him up at the top listed. There he is. And down here, what do we find on the Facebook page? Ah, there he is uh, speaking at the event. Where is the video? Here we go. Here it is. Look, there he is. Pictures of him speaking, even some video of him speaking. A beautiful home and a beautiful car and jewelry and clothing and all of that. The moment you die, it no longer belongs to you. Just that ass. Spend it now. Really, what's yours, the prophet said, is what you send in Salah. That's yours. In Wallahi, you will never regret it. You will never regret giving. 50,000? Allahu Akbar. Brother, may Allah bless you. The best of this life and the best of the hereafter say I mean. So that's right on the school's own website. You, Sama, can you tell us before we go to Sharam, who is... Siraj Wahash. Well, why not let Brother uh, Shram talk about him, and I would like to say something quickly about what James White said in the previous statement, if so we don't repeat ourselves. Sure. Go ahead, Shram. Well, Brandon, uh, I'm so glad you played those clips, because let's talk about his connection again. And can I get this analogy before I dig into Siraj Wahash? Sure. Brandon, imagine if Usama and I as former Muslims, were all of a sudden found to be speaking at a fundraiser for Mormons uh, or for Jehovah's Witnesses or for communists or even for uh, CARE or, the, or, or uh, ICNA. Would we not be discredited? Would you not be doing the same program about us? You would, because you, as a follower of the truth, would be concerned at these events. So not only... Is it concerning that Yasser Qadi is speaking at fundraisers for Ikna and Isna, and I, I'm sorry, Ikna and Care, but Siraj Wahad is an unindicted co-conspirator, according to the Holy Land Foundation trials and according to evidence that is that is that this is this is well-known evidence. He was the former uh, vice director of Isna, the Islamic Society of North America. That is one of the top front groups of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I, I want to read a couple of statements here, because in 1993, uh, we know that there was the bombing at the World Trade Center, Brandon, right? At, that bom uh, at, at the trial, subsequent trial, of the blind sheikh, Omar Abdul Rahman, uh, Wahaj actually testified on behalf of uh, Rahman, on, on behalf of the blind sheikh, calling him a respected scholar and saying that he is a bold and strong preacher of Islam. Then in 1991, Brandon Wahaj uh, made other statements at a lecture in North Texas where he advocated for the establishment of an Islamic state in the United States. He, he said, wherever you come from, quote, wherever you come from, you come to America and you came for one reason, and for one reason only, to establish Allah's deen. That means his commandment, his worldview. During the same lecture, he, he says, that, uh, quote, 
There will never be an Islamic state, never, until there's first an Islamic state of mind. Then he says that uh, Muslims should be involved in politics, not because it's the American thing to do. Uh, they should get involved because politics are a weapon in, to use in the cause of Islam. And we can give so many examples of who Siraj Wahaj is. The fact that Yasser Qadi says this man is one of our favorite imams, they bring him into Memphis into a fundraiser for an Islamic school, tells you everything you need to know. So let me say it this way, Brandon. Yasser Qadi is in the midst of... Uh, is running around in circles of the top jihadis, the top jihadis of the Muslim Brotherhood, who by their own words in the explanatory memorandum call for the overthrow of America, the destruction of America. Yasser Qadi is running with that crowd and endorsing them. Where on earth, where on earth does anybody, yet, let alone a Christian who's supposed to have discernment, think that that is a moderate, that that is somebody that should be not only dialogued with, but then invited to speak to Christians. This shows the lack of discernment of James White. Hmm. Usama? Well, uh, uh, the, the reason I, I don't want to repeat what my brother is going to say here, I want to, have, I want to share something different. In his statement, uh, James White said, the difference is between Islam and Christianity, which makes us wonderful. When I heard this, literally, I almost fall off my chair. You know what the difference between Christianity and Islam? Muslims, we're going to get this in details, do not believe in Jesus to be the Son of God. Do not believe that He died on the cross and rose again. Do not believe in the Trinity. And Brother Brandon, if that's what Muslims believe, and which is make, makes them different than us, how can this be wonderful? Christ is not the Son of God. Christ did not die on the cross. Christ never rose with it. So what's left in Christianity? There's nothing left in Christianity. Another statement. He's talking about the similarity. And as Brother Shram said, and I repeat again, there is no similarity whatsoever between Islam and Christianity. Not even the stories which Muhammad stole from the Bible and he repeated them in a many, in many corrupted way throughout the Quran. There is nothing to unite us, not the differences, not the similarity, nothing to make our relationship with the Muslims wonderful. And as he mentioned, fear, the, fear versus love. It's very important. We love the Muslim people. I love the Muslim people, but I love them right. I love them for Jesus. I love them for heaven. If James White thinking by what he's doing, he's loving the Muslim people to have the holding hand and the song, singing the Kumbaya or I love you and you love me and we're a happy family. It's a Barney song. I'm sorry. That's not love. To love the Muslims is to let them know who they are and where they're going to go if they continue to be where they at. So if you are a doctor and some patient come to you and that patient has some cancer, to love them, to love the patient, you have to tell them, you have cancer. You have to reach out to them with every uh, way to save, the, to save their life. That's not what James White is doing, to tell the Muslims, to uh, give the Muslims the, the platform in the church to Muslimize the church, to Muslimize America, or to make Islam look acceptable as there is moderate Islam, that is not love for the Muslim. You are deceiving the Muslims for hell. Because if I'm a Muslim and I'm sitting in that church or I'm sitting in that uh, mosque and I hear this dialogue, I do not need Jesus Christ. I do not need Christianity. I'm good. After all, James White himself approved of my belief. Why do I need to leave Islam to anything else? Thank you, Usama. Let me read this real quick and then I, want, I know you want to say something else. Yeah. In a September 1991 speech in Toronto titled The Afghanistan Jihad, Wahaj, this is the guy again that Yasser Qadi brought to, hit, brought to the school there. You just saw the video of him saying, come out. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Come out and hear him. Wahaj told his fellow Muslims, quote, those who struggle for Allah, it doesn't matter what kind of weapon you use. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. You don't need nuclear weapons or even guns. If you have faith in Allah and a knife. If Allah wants you to win, you will win because Allah is the only one who fights. And when his hand is over your hand, whoever is at war against my friends, whoever is at war against my friends, I declare war on them. The Americans are not your friends. The Canadians are not your friends. The Europeans are not your friends. Your friend is Allah, the messenger, and those who believe. These people will never be satisfied with you until you follow their religion. End quote. Why would... Yasser Qadi, bring to Memphis and tell you to come hear this man. He's wonderful. Hmm. A man that says this, among many other things we could document. 
And then James White wants to say that he has a kindred spirit with Yasser Qadi, who's hanging out with these kind of people, not to mention all the people he's hanging out with the Al Madrid Institute that we haven't even gotten to. Why would he say we could find common ground with someone like that? Can you find common ground with a cultural jihadi, jihadist, or a literal jihadist? You know, My friends, this is very, very troubling. But here, you know what's going on? We bring all these facts out. James White defends himself on Twitter nonstop, nonstop. And his followers, you know what they do? Instead of dealing with the facts, they have it puned us. Oh, we're just interested in making money. We're just interested in selling product. I don't even have a book on Islam. James White's the one that keeps tweeting and Facebooking. Have you read my book? Have you read my books? Have you watched my videos? So, but in, so instead of dealing with the facts, if you go look on Twitter and social media, all they do is attack us, slander us, I believe. And yet they accuse us of that. That's one of the tactics. Accuse your opponent of what you actually do. Sl you, you say, you slander me. But in reality is, they're the ones slandering us. We have never said anybody's doing this just for money. We have never said, oh, they don't really love Muslims. All we have said is, you've been duped. You don't realize, obviously, who you're talking to. Hmm. Usama? You know what the difference between Siraj Wahaj and Yasser uh, Qadi? What? Siraj Wahaj is out of the closet. Yasser Qadi is in the closet. Yasser Qadi is a very smooth man. He's here in America. He had to be in that position, talking like that, to protect himself and to protect their agenda. Siraj Wahaj care less about what, most, what Americans will do to him. And, and, and the, the statement I was going to say earlier, and uh, after uh, you told me you're going to mention it here, when I hear James White talking about he had divine revelation, and, 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 and Yasser Qadi, Imam Yasser Qadi, have also divine revelation. That is a confession, Brother Brennan, that Mr. James White believes that the Quran is a revelation from God. How can I understand it as a Muslim? If I'm sitting in that church right now as a Muslim, or even if I'm a Christian naive, like James White is, and I hear James White said that both of James White and Yasser Qadi, they both have divine revelation. This is a direct, a direct confession, a clear, like, like ABC, that James White will tell the Muslims, you're good. Your Islam is good. Your revelation is good. The Quran is good. Shame on you. And of course, I know he would refute that because he says, you know, I give him the gospel. I give him the gospel. I explain the next oh, day. Oh, in that's one and a half hour, I never heard the gospel. Well, he, in the next day, well, which we even got to. What if I died between yeah. that hour I, and the next day? What, and what if I never went to the mosque the following day? Well, see, what folks maybe don't know is the next day, we haven't gotten those clips yet on radio even. The next day he went to the Islamic, the Memphis Islamic Center, and he supposedly def defined the Trinity and a few other things for them. I'm but sure. as Usama said, if people are only hearing snippets, uh, we're, co we have, we're kindred spirits, he, he has divine revelation, I believe I have divine revelation. These are comments that don't even need to be made. And brother they, this is comments that don't need to be, and why are you having a dialogue? Why don't you go back to having a debate? I, th I think I heard sometime, I could be wrong, but I think I heard some time ago, a few years ago, James White talking about how he would never have dialogue with anyone. He would always debate, debate, debate. If that's true, why is he all of a sudden having dialogue? This, when you talk about interfaith dialogue, when you talk about um, uh, building bridges, that is really a form of ecumenicalism, is it not, Usama? Absolutely. They, you know what's amazing about the bridges? Brother Brandon, when we build bridges with the Muslims, <laughs> It is one way bridge. It's from Christianity to Islam. It's America to become Muslim. That's not, it was never a two way bridge. Why would you not have interface meetings in the Muslim world? Why would you not build bridges with Muslims? Why Muslims will not bridges, build bridges with us in Egypt or any Muslim country? Because they know. They will lose there because the Christians know Islam there. But sadly, neither James White or American have a clue what Islam is. Therefore, that bridge needs to be burned, not to be built, because that bridge will cause this Christian to lose their assurance of their salvation, their assurance of their belief. And it will never lead a Muslim to Christ because I promise you, James White, you will never lead one Muslim to Christ by this message you're using. And we'll ask former Muslim Yusam, uh, Sharam hating that in just a moment. Is what James is doing going to lead Muslims to Christ. But first, here's another clip of James White. Watch this. I, I learned my initial training in what shirk was and the categories of it, rubabia, so on and so forth, comes from you. Okay, so uh, you're, you're my mentor here. Wow, okay, and then one more clip. Watch this. Now, the reason I'm playing the beginning is because right at the beginning they give the summary from his final statement. Listen to what he says. Ever, ever has a group come from within our tradition performing acts of terrorism, killing innocent people, wanton violence, 
and then they have brought about everlasting peace and good from this movement. Do you really think at the age of 19, you will carry the wave of jihad forward and your people triple your age, don't know what they're doing? Jihad is a legitimate term, it's a noble term, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. But those groups that misuse and abuse the term jihad, we should be brave enough to stand up for the sake of Allah and criticize them because they're harming the real jihad much more than any non-Muslim can ever harm it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be people of the true jihad and not the false jihad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to do jihad as He is pleased with and not a jihad that is uh, that is false and that will lead us astray. May Allah azza wa jal return izzah and glory to this religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace to this earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to live as Muslims, to die as shaheed and to be resurrected amongst the Nabi and Siddiqin and Shuhada'u Salihin. وحسن ولايك رفيقا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Okay, uh, so James White's playing that. You saw James White. James White clearly doesn't understand Islam or jihad because the guy just said he believes in jihad. He just said he's a jihadi. Now there are different types of jihadi. The question is, what kind of jihad is he want? But here's the thing: he's all worried supposedly about some who are misusing jihad, and we should call them out. Well, then why did he have wa Siraj Wahaj? At, at this school and say he's wonderful because isn't Siraj Wahaj calling for the knife, the use of the knife coming against the Canadians, the Americans and the Europeans? I mean, is it Siraj Wahaj, one of the most radical, radical jihadi types around? And wouldn't then Yasser Qadi be calling him out? No, he's inviting him to Memphis and he's wonderful. Come hear him. Hmm. And yet James White says, I have a kindred spirit with Yasser Qadi, who's friends with Siraj Wahaj, who's talking about jihad. You see, James, listen, James, listen. Pay attention, James. Do you understand jihad? Do you understand cultural jihad? Do you understand these guys, despite what you say, is not a consistent Muslim? He speaks out of both sides of his mouth. This is Takriya. This is Takriya. What is wrong with you, James? What is wrong with your spirit, James? What is wrong with your discernment, James? I'm worried about your spiritual condition as a brother, James, and I'm sorry we have to do this publicly, but you've made it public, and there's no way to correct false proclamations mm. that are made publicly unless you correct them publicly. We're calling you to repent, humble yourself, allow the Holy Spirit to convict you that I believe the damage you're doing to Muslims, to non-believers, to Christians, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent, James White. Mm. There's no excuse. There's no spinning. Don't change the subject. Don't go after us and our integrity and our character, our motives and insults. Deal with the facts, James. You are a debater. You know how to debate. And when you lose a debate, you change the focus and you go after the messenger. When you're doing that, James, you're admitting you've already lost this debate. We have the facts. We have the video. We have the proof. You have lost this debate, my friend. Humble yourself and admit it. Repent and set the record straight. Amen. Would you say the same thing, Sharam? Brother Brandon, I appreciate your passion there, and I 100% agree. I 100%. Uh, James White is lacking spiritual discernment, clearly, because he is giving a pass to someone like Yasser Qadi, number one. Number two, Brandon, you also said it. Uh, Brother Usama said it. Uh, and I've said this for years. When you tell a Muslim, as a Christian, that there is some validity in their revelation, in their sources, in their belief system. When you want to give credence and respect to an ideology that you read from Second John, uh, 1 John as well, Brother Brandon, in chapter 2 says the same thing. That uh, and, and let me just quickly read from it here. It says in verse 23, I'm sorry, verse uh, 22 of 1 John, Two, who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. And so we are warning because one, James, you are damaging the opportunity for Muslims to hear the gospel. Don't validate that the Quran is, is divine revelation. Don't validate that we have things in common. All you're doing is you're confusing the Muslim and, as Usama, Brother Usama said, even more dangerously as a minister of the gospel, you 
are de endangering the faith of Christians. So many Christians, Brandon, are in this ecumenical bubble that they believe that we have some common ground with Islam, that we some we can have dialogue and we have an inter uh, an, an Abrahamic faith. By the way, that's what uh, Qadi said in the church dialogue. It's very clearly in the video that he that he he claimed that Islam is an Abrahamic faith, and so th this is so dangerous. This is beyond dangerous, and this is what you're damaging the opportunity for Muslims to hear the gospel, and you're damaging the faith of Christians. You're not contending for the faith. And let me just quickly address Brandon jihad. Okay, I want to quickly address jihad because I know what White's going to say. White's going to say you guys are taking that clip out of context. Uh, Qadi is is coming against literal jihad. Well, first of all, you said it. Siraj Wahaj and others like him have very clearly called for not only cultural jihad, which is what I read from, according to his statement, but also literal jihad. The definition of jihad, and, and Brother Brandon, I'm holding up here the Sharia law book, the Reliance of the Traveler, certified by Al-Azhar University, the most premier Islamic Sunni school in the world. Brother Osama can validate that. And it defines jihad. It defines jihad in two ways. What's called the greater jihad and the lesser jihad. The greater jihad is spiritual jihad. So Qadi would say we have a spiritual jihad. That we're supposed to spiritually uh, strive and fight, uh, fight against the flesh. That's true. That is true. And I will validate that. They do believe that there is a fight against the flesh. But the lesser jihad that this defines. And here's, here's the specific definition. Jihad means to war against non-Muslims and is etymologically derived from the word mujahada, signifying warfare to establish the religion. That's the definition according to the Islamic law book, the Sharia law book. And so therefore the lesser jihad is lesser, this, this, this jihad against non-Muslims, which is both cultural and physical. It's lesser, Brandon, because they believe that when Jesus comes back, the Muslims, that this jihad will be over. That Jesus, the, is, the, the Islamic Jesus, will lead this army and destroy the cross, kill the pigs, and dis abolish the jizya. This is out of Sahih Bukhari. Muhammad said it. That the, the, this is the lie. I know we're going to get to the clip at some point in the programs that the lie that was told. So let's define jihad. Jihad is spiritual, true, but it is also physical and cultural, and they believe they must wage the lesser jihad against the non-Muslims until Jesus returns with their Messiah, and then it won't be necessary. That's why it's lesser, it, not because it's less important. So we are in a basket of lies, Brandon, and James White has put himself in the hornet's nest. He is mixing and, 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 and endorsing, right, Brandon? When he says we have kindred spirits, he is my mentor. You've taught me much. I'm learning from you. You are endorsing somebody who is denying Christ and is operating by the Antichrist spirit. He's endorsing, he's endorsing and working with a, an admitted jihadi. Mm -hmm. He's endorsing and working with an admitted jihadi. And again, James says, well, he's a consistent Muslim. He, said, he implies that this guy is some kind of a moderate. He's moving to the left. Yet just May 2017, he brings... This guy, this imam that you Siraj heard, Wahaj. Siraj Wahaj. Mm -hmm. But again, if 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 uh, Yasser Qadi wants to give speeches talking about the kind of jihad he's for, could it be he's doing that because he's on some kind of watch list and wants to be on record saying, oh, I'm not a part of that. But then yet he brings in Siraj Wahaj. And yet, what do we also see from frontpagemag.com and other documented sources? Yasser Qadi's speech against the Jews didn't happen in a vacuum. He's previously defended high-profile terrorists such as Ali Al-Tamini, who received a life sentence for his role as the spiritual leader of the Virginia Jihad group planning attacks against U.S. troops, and Afia Sakali, an Al-Qaeda operative who was convicted of attempting to murder a U.S. Army captain in Afghanistan. In addition, Qadi has threatened the wrath of God upon world leaders. So if he is not for the actual jihad of killing, what is he defending these people for? I think he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth. I think he wants this stuff out on the internet. So the, he has the government officials saying, oh, but maybe he's really not a threat after all. He's just for the cultural jihad. That's his right. That's the practice of his religion. Don't be stupid. Add to this, brother Brandon. Yasser Qadi, Imam Yasser Qadi, memorized the Quran, his own words, in the church, 
He already memorized the Quran. So I know for sure he is familiar with the 27 verses where Allah mentions the word jahidu, perform jihad. As a matter of fact, the word jihad is mentioned in the Quran 29 times too in the early Mecca shelters, which is talking about parents and perform, parents perform jihad against their children or the other jihad which have nothing to do with killing. Okay, but the 27 verses, which I believe Imam Yasir Qadi memorizing, they all teach jihad to be a holy war to fight, to engage in war, as a brother Shrom said, against non-Muslims. With the interpretation of all Muslim scholars. I'm not I'm talking about one or two, all Muslim scholars. Add to that, I know for sure. Imam Yasir Qadi is very familiar with the 79 verses of Allah. Uh, Allah's word in the Quran, where Allah in these verses mentions the word war, W-A-R. And I believe he also is very familiar how Muslim scholars interpreted these 79 verses to mean one thing and one thing only, it is to perform jihad. So I know some people, Brother Brandon, will tell you uh, jihad could mean this, jihad could mean that, but the reality is this. Jihad in these verses of the Quran mean meant by all Muslim scholars to be holy war, and the 79 verses of the Quran interpreted by all Muslim scholars to be jihad. So there's no way, there's no way under the blue sky that Imam Yasir Qadi misunderstood all these verses. And I know for sure also Imam Yasir knew how Muhammad practiced jihad and how Muslims in the early days of Islam practiced jihad and how Muslims practiced jihad the last 1400 years plus 30 some years and I believe we know that over 600 million human has been killed by the hands of the Muslims simply as a simple practice to the word of Allah and the command of Muhammad of performing jihad. Don't forget, Muhammad said, I have been commanded, Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari. And this is the top scholars we know for sure Muhammad said it. I have been commanded to engage in war against people until they testify to the fact that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. So how Islam started, how Islam spread all over the world, it is by jihad, which is engaging in war with infidels, engaging in war with non-Muslims. So it is Quran, it is Sunnah, it is Islam, it is, it is, it is, that's what it is. They have, we have no other way to understand jihad to be but that. And as once again, uh, Brother James White would like to debate me on jihad. Hey, I am available 24-7. Just call me. Let's go to the next clip by James White. Uh, I have seen a movement on the part of Dr. Khadi over the uh, past number of years. Uh, certainly, I've, I've seen the same thing in, in Shabir Ali. Uh, you listen to stuff from Shabir back in the 1990s and listen to him now, and he's, he's moved a long, long way. Both have, have not moved to the right, they've moved to the left. Well, that's again kind of shocking, being as Yasser Qadi just a few weeks ago, May 2017, had, had, had this Muslim imam that you've heard from, Siraj Wahaj, at the school. Come hear him, he's wonderful. And, I, what, what, and, yeah? and Brother Abraham, I wonder how many of the American people know who Shabir Ali is. Shabir Ali is not a man who moved to the left. He is 100% right. You guys have to understand, I can show you almost every imam in the world. Where they, when they speak by the right side of their mouth, they are on the right. When they speak by the left side of their mouth, they are on the left. I mean, I'm not kidding you. I can show you some videos where a Muslim imam speaking to the American people and he condemning the 19 hijacker of September 11. And he actually sends them to hell because of what they have done. How they hijacked Islam, how they destroyed Islam, and Islam is a loving, peaceful religion. Same imam, same imam, when he spoke with, his right, with the right side of his mouth, he's praising the 19 hijackers. He's speaking very highly of them, how they are praising Allah, how they sacrifice their life to please Allah, to make the religion of Allah the highest religion, and to live in obedience to Allah. So where in the world you can tell me that Shabir Ali is moving to the left? Some of his speeches, maybe, when he spoke to some useful idiot Americans. Those who will take him and say, oh, he's a great guy, he's moving to the left, like... James White. But if you watch some of Shabir Ali debate with some of my friends, you see him all the way to the right. He's calling us an infidel and he literally believes that we're not supposed to live. We're supposed to be put to death. Same guy speaking with his right, the right side of his mouth or the left side of his mouth. This is the reality. 
And I'm sorry, James White does not understand it because he does not know how Muslims talk. Let's go to the next clip. Uh, he, he's a good speaker. And as I said at the time, one of the things I respect about Yasser Qadi is he seeks for consistency. Well, I don't think he's seeking consistency, James. We've already shown you he's not seeking consistency by the people he hangs out with. He's speaking out of both sides of his mouth, I believe. But it's unfortunate. Again, James can't just simply admit he has been deceived by this man. He's wrong. Instead, again, his Twitter and Facebook and all that and his racials are just filled with personal attacks of us. He doesn't want to deal with the facts because he's lost the debate. So you change the focus of the debate. Here's our next clip. The fact of the matter is that when someone asks the question, is ISIS Islamic? If anyone answers either yes or no without making necessary distinctions, both are not telling the truth. The conservative militaristic Christian who says, yes, that is Islam as a whole is lying. They're lying. That's not true. Anybody can see that's not true. But the Muslim at the same time who says, no, 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 there's nothing. You're not being truthful either. Because you know not only the depth of the support they have, especially amongst, amongst the Salafi, the Wahhabi, but you know the nature of the Hadith and how you can find things in the Hadith that are supportive of what they're doing by providing a particular context. And, and the problem is, and this has been my argument for a long time, the problem is your sources are insufficiently consistent and coherent to end this debate. Well, you wanna to respond to that, Sharam? So Brandon, before I address the clip that you just played, I have a question to ask because uh, first of all, Mr. White calls anybody who dares say ISIS is Islamic a right-wing militant Christian liar. So we're not, we're not just confused, we're apparently liars if we actually try to show evidence that ISIS is Islamic. But my question to him is, he says, well, it should be clear to see that ISIS is not Islamic. I'm sorry, how is that clear? How is it clear when the media, our education system, our government, including our former president, Barack Hussein Obama, and now Mr. White is defending Islam and defending the idea that ISIS is not Islamic. He is the one that is confused. He is the one that is not looking at evidence. We can spend hours, and I've done it in my presentations, Osama has done it in his talks, laying out evidence that ISIS is indeed Islamic, they're doing on the majors everything that Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, did himself. Usama, we're running out of time. What quickly? Don't you have eight reasons why we can say, of course, and James is going to say, well, I said that ISIS is not Islam in its whole. Well, <laughs> is that even a true fact? ISIS is Islam. If ISIS is not Islam, there is no Islam. That means Muhammad was not Muhammad and Allah is not Allah and, and all that. Let me share quickly with you. The reasons why Brother James White or any Muslims or any of our politician or the liberal media in America will tell you that ISIS is not Islam is this. Number one, they tell you Islam does not condone the killing of innocent. That is a lie from the bottom of hell because who are the innocents? The Muslims. The true Muslims, not any Muslim, because the hypocrite Muslims are not, are not Muslims. So we know from the Quran that Christian and Jews are infidels. Therefore, they must be killed. Read Quran 572, Quran 573, Quran 47.4, and on and on. Now let me give you the second reason why they will tell you that ISIS is not a true representation of Islam. It is number two, because ISIS, vast majority of victims are Muslims. If they are killing Muslims, that means they are not Muslims. No, they are not killing Muslims. They are killing the hypocrites. You can learn about who are the hypocrites. Quran chapter 3 verse 167. And that, that's a very important verse. Listen carefully. If you are not engaging in war with infidels, if you are not supporting those who perform jihad financially, you are a hypocrite. That means every moderate Muslim in the world is not a Muslim, but a hypocrite. And Allah in Quran chapter 9, verse 73, orders the Muslims to wipe out the hypocrites. This is the word of Allah, 973, perform jihad. Allah is telling Muhammad, 
uh, perform jihad against the infidels and the hypocrites. Be harsh with them, and then Allah will send them to hell. Reason number three. ISIS is not a state. Says who? Are you trying to tell me the Islamic State of uh, Saudi Arabia in Muhammad days was not a state either? Because that's how Muhammad started his first Islamic State. 640 uh, uh, years after Christ. So, and if you study how much ISIS have done the last four years, you see they have done greater than what Muhammad did in his last uh, 12 years, uh, 10 years, claiming to be uh, the jihadi Muhammad, the jihadi Islam uh, practicer. Now let's go to reason number four. ISIS is simply a terrorist organization. Exactly. I agree. But if you read Quran 3, 151, Quran chapter 8, 12 and 8, 60, and Quran chapter 63, verse 26 and 27, and Quran chapter 59, verse 2 and verse 13, you will see that Allah is a terrorist. Muhammad is a terrorist. Allah's angels are terrorists. And every Muslim believer is a terrorist. Let's go to point number five. ISIS executes, executes, how do you say? Excuses? No, kill. Executes. Execute. And so you make fun of my English, I make fun of your Arabic. <laughs> ISIS killed uh, the prisoners. Excuse me, that's exactly what Allah orders him to do. Go to Quran chapter 8 and verse 67, where Allah said, It is not for a prophet to take captive until he have made a great slaughter among them. If ISIS will not kill the prisoners, they're not Muslims. Because they're not following the teaching of Muhammad or the teaching of Allah in the Quran. Reason number six, ISIS killed children. Oh, they have slaves. They actually rape and force women into marriage. Hello? What do you know about Muhammad? Muhammad killed women and children. Muhammad had slaves. Muhammad raped women and children. He, for heaven's sake, he raped his own favorite wife. Aisha and his favorite wife, the other wife, Safiya uh, bin Tuhayai. So obviously, this is the reality of Islam. As, unless you do not know Islam, then I cannot help you. I'll give you one more reason. ISIS threatened the religious minority of genocide. That's exactly what Muhammad did to the Christian Jews in his early days. And I can go on and on, Brother Brandon. We don't have time. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, we can give an invitation here to Mr. James White. Debate me on ISIS. He's already he's would... already tweeted when I said that. He said, no, Brandon, you come on my show. He wanted me to come on his show, not you. Oh, he doesn't you know want what? to come on my show. I will go with on you. his show. I yeah. will go to his studio. I will go to his home. I will go to his church. I will meet him any place, anytime, in as long as I'm alive. So if, far, though, if, he if, has... if I'm dead, then I'm sorry I cannot debate so him. So far, he has deflected the invitation. So again, I think you hold the record of being the only person he's refused to debate. So congratulations. It's an honor for me. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Appreciate you. Fist bump. All right, Sharam has been my guest. We'll, uh, as long as you sum a deck doc, his website, thestraightway.org, Sharam's uh, tillproject.com, uh, tillproject.com. This is the first of a couple programs, three or four. Uh, we'll continue. Next program, we'll see where James White invites Yasser Qadi to make a video so the church can learn the true faith of Islam. Exactly. And we'll also hear James White say, we need to partner up with him and extend a hand because... Uh, America is becoming secular. No, no, no. Sorry, James. It's not actually. It's not secularism that's ruling the day. It's spiritualism. New age spiritualism. But he says secularism is going to rule the day. And therefore, we need to extend a hand to the Muslims because we might need each other. <laughs> this is just, I don't know. I don't, I just can't even believe this is happening. What has happened to poor James White? All right. We'll pick it up next time in our next program. Thank you for supporting what we do. WVWfoundation.com. WVWfoundation.com. Not many programs like this, folks. Not many people willing to take this on. Why? Because they all want to be a part of the good old boy club. So, folks, if you appreciate, we're independent broadcasters. We speak truth. We don't worry about the good old boy club. If you appreciate that, we need your support. WVWfoundation.com. WVWfoundation.com. Thank you, Usama. Thank you, Sharam. Until next time, take care.